Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Danielle Duclos, and I'm the Senior Vice President of Marketing for Bluefin. I wanted to thank you all for joining today's webinar, Customer Authentication, Anti-Fraud, and Chargeback Tools for Bluefin Clients. Today's discussion will last approximately 45 minutes, with 10 minutes allotted at the end to take questions. To ask a question, simply type into the question pane on the right-hand side of your screen. If there are questions that we are not able to answer due to time constraints, they will be addressed in a follow-on email to attendees. A copy of the presentation accompanying the session is also available in the handout section of the webinar. Additionally, we are recording the webinar and it will be posted on our website tomorrow. We will send you a link when it has been posted so that you may share it with your colleagues. I am pleased to welcome today's presenters, which include myself, Morgan Gines, Bluefin's Vice President of Relationship Management and Inside Sales, and Jennifer Jonk here, Bluefin's Vice President of Solutions Engineering and Integrations. We are very excited to present our new product enhancements today. Since several of the products we are discussing assist specifically with e-commerce transactions, we will be kicking off with an overview of the rise in e-commerce and what that means for merchants, including uh, a shift in payment preference, which is where we will discuss our new Google Pay and Apple Pay enablement on your checkout. E-commerce is also causing a rise in fraud, not surprising, and we will discuss several tools to help our merchants authenticate customers with 3D Secure, also called 3DS, and proactively manage fraud with our anti-fraud scoring platform. An additional new platform we are offering is for chargeback management, which utilizes intelligent workflows and real-time process monitoring to better monitor and manage your chargebacks. Finally, we will quickly overview two new additional products as part of our PayConnect suite, including our QuickBooks integration and our new ACH web debit verification service that will meet natural regulations, and also two new resources, including our developer portal and our online customer chat that's now available to Bluefin clients. So with that said, let's get started. So before we begin, I'm going to kick us off with a very quick overview of what we call Bluefin's core products and enablements. Since we have a variety of clients and partners on the phone today, your core product likely falls into either PayConnex or Decryptix. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time reviewing those. Um, let's talk quickly about PayConnex for Salesforce and ShieldConnex. Many of our customers and partners may not actually know that PayConnex is also available via the Salesforce platform. We offer both card present and card not present processing through Salesforce with a variety of PAX devices. Uh, this is actually a great enablement for any company that accepts payments in Salesforce as PayConnex is completely integrated with the platform. Um, and also we offer both what we call a standard and a custom component, um, which you can find more information on our Salesforce app exchange page. You can get to that um, by going to bluefin.com backslash products. And just as a note, everybody's going to receive a copy of this deck today so that you'll have all of the URLs that we are referencing and you can quickly go to the website and learn more. So while Bluefin is very well known for PCI validated point-to-point -point encryption, we also offer a data security platform, Shield Connects, which is for the immediate tokenization of any payment, ACH, personally identifiable information or protected health information that's entered online. This differs from our standard tokenization that is provided through PayConnects today, and that Shield Connects utilizes format preserving tokenization, which is useful for many business purposes requiring the last four or the last six digits or letters of a piece of data. It is also vaultless, providing greater efficiency if you want to tokenize uh, many data elements, such as a driver's license, a social security number, et cetera. Um, it's also available both through our iframe or through an API connection. So you can get it through PayConnex and also through a standalone solution. And it will tokenize any piece of data that you want. So it's extremely, extremely flexible. This is an extremely useful platform for companies that are accepting not only payments in ACH data, 
but also personal information, which could be available as clear text in the event of a data breach. And we definitely don't want that. As we all know on this phone, Bluefin is really committed to both payment security, but also data security. So if you are concerned about data privacy and adhering to regulations such as GDPR and CCPA, Shield Connects is an excellent solution for compliance. Um, and as I said, it's bought, offered both through your PayConnects integration today and also outside of PayConnex as a standalone platform. And I'm gonna look real quick and I have one question. Okay, we can address that after. Okay, so moving on. The next slide, this one that we're gonna talk a little bit about, it does pertain exactly to all of the products that we have today because all of them offer some sort of e-commerce component. And e-commerce is so important, I think, as we all know at this time, because of the pandemic, which has caused a major shift in both how consumers want to purchase and also how companies gather data. When the world was you know, forced into lockdown, I think we all know there was really no choice but to turn to the internet um, and just get the goods and the, sometimes the services even that were needed for everyday life. And as a result, Online purchasing really became a norm for everyone from individuals to families to businesses to even those that were really the die-hard brick and mortar purchasers who have now converted to e-commerce because it can be more convenient and companies like Amazon, for example, they offer same-day shipping. In 2020, e-commerce saw a massive spike. The total sales were 862 billion in the US and this represents a 44% growth over 2019. And the statistics out uh, just now from eMarketer actually show that e-commerce saw more gains in 21, topping out at 909 billion. So 22, and I'm not sure if I believe this, but this is what they're projecting, uh, e-commerce spend is supposed to go to $1 trillion. So that is really a staggering amount. Unfortunately, as we well know, the pandemic also caused a shift in how companies were forced to gather data. And so you're seeing more personal health and more personal information being entered online than ever before. This slide really just deals with the purchasing part of it, but the online data aspect is also one that merchants need to keep in mind. So it's safe to say that online purchasing and data entry is here to stay, but what exactly does that mean for merchants? So just as Apple Pay and Google Pay became popular for point of sale transactions before the pandemic, these digital wallet payment methods have now become a popular payment choice online. They are convenient, they're fast, and they're prefer preferred rather by certain segments and age groups. Millennials, for example, um, people who are very, you know, against cash, the cashless society, and as e-commerce grows, we are very cognizant that payment choice is going to be a consideration at the forefront of merchants in choosing um, what they offer at their checkout. Now, the second trend that we're seeing, which is not surprising, is that fraudsters have taken notice of the rise in e-commerce. Fraud comes in many forms, from what we call friendly fraud, which is where a customer may purchase a good and then claim that it was not them that purchased it, to hackers making fraudulent purchases with stolen credentials. And since e-commerce is not a face-to-face -face transaction, there can be a higher likelihood of fraudulent attempts in this channel. And the third trend we are seeing is somewhat related to the second trend. And that is how to manage the chargeback process, whether that is from a legitimate source or friendly fraud or even a nefarious attempt. The new products we will be discussing today address all three of these trends. So let's first talk about the enablement of digital wallets online. Like I mentioned, digital wallets had gained enormous popularity before the pandemic. You will see the Apple Pay and Google Pay options at most larger merchants today. And about 12% of the world's population is estimated to be using digital wallets and Apple Pay adoption has about 507 million users. Now, keeping in mind, this is still a very small microcosm of the total overall payment experience, but nonetheless, we do see it as growing. Um, and that's what the researchers are telling us. And as the pandemic set in, consumers also wanted to be able to use 
the same methods that they were using at the brick and mortar um, online. And that's where Apple Pay and Google Pay came in. Um, immediately, you know, upon the pandemic, the largest of the merchants, your Amazon, your Walmart, were immediately able to add these payment methods to their checkouts because these payment options help with customer satisfaction and conversion. This is a major reason why we began working on enablement of Google Pay and Apple Pay with the PayConnect checkout last year. So currently, our Google Pay and Apple Pay options can be implemented via API. We want to note that implementation through our hosted payment forms is being worked on currently. It's actually in testing, and that's going to be available later in Q1. But for now, there is a wealth of information on how you can enable rather Google Pay and Apple Pay through your e-com checkout today through API on our developer portal. There is no fee associated with offering these payment options through PayConnect, and we are working hard to finalize the availability of both on the hosted payment forms. Once available, specifically on the HPFs, we will be providing a notification to our customer base. But if you are interested now um, in checking it out, you can go to our developer portal. The URLs are right there. Get the code, check it out, um, see what's involved, and as always, there is contact information on each page. If you run into any sort of issues, contact us directly. We will get an integration specialist or a member of product or sales to reach out to you. And so now I'm going to hand it over to Morgan to talk a little bit about our 3DS product. So Morgan, take it away. Perfect, thank you, Danielle. I'm pleased to present and discuss one of our most invaluable modern e-commerce security products in 3DS. So what is the problem? You, you went through a lot of it, Danielle, and that was great, where e-commerce transactions, they bring challenges in authentication and chargebacks. So an example, a customer forgets to cancel their monthly Amazon Prime subscription to keep up with their daily shopping habits or Netflix subscription for their nightly TV binging fun and they dispute the charge. This would be considered um, an e-commerce transaction that 3D Secure would help with. So your top line revenue is at risk because e-commerce transactions, their authorization rates are dropping. We estimate from some of our research, and you'll see the links at the bottom there, that 16% of sales are lost because the issuer does not have enough information to authorize a transaction. Four times the number of declines in a card not present environment compared to a card present environment. And each dollar of fraud and the rising chargebacks is costing retailers $3.36 for every $1 of that direct fraud loss. So this is a significant problem and continues to grow exponentially as we are seeing more e-commerce transactions be the normal in payments. So what is the solution? With 3DS, <clears throat> the solution that we're talking about, we estimate that 20% increase in authorizations yield a significant ROI in both volume and top line revenue. And this is across all of our verticals, healthcare, higher education, government, and ticketing. Anyone that processes e-commerce transactions can have value in our 3DS solution for both the authorizations and then the increase in revenue that they will see. 90% of transactions receive a liability shift. So examples of this would be, we have a government entity. They had heavy e-commerce transaction volume. They experienced over the last several months, a net chargeback and authorization savings benefit of $4.1 million with an additional 3.5 million in volume processed. So this drove both their authentication rates as well as increased their top line revenue for the additional volume that was processed. 3DS covers specific chargeback codes across all of the card brands. You'll see that on the chart right here with the, the visual. So you can, you can drill into each of these more. We will also uh, share this deck for you to see, you know, which ones would be specific to your business. But with 3DS, the friendly fraud liability shift is transferred to that issuing bank. So this um, helps with our chargeback issue and also helps drive that revenue. So how does it work? <clears throat> so the 3DS authentication service is embedded into the browser to tokenize and encrypt all sensitive data. Our PayConnects and ShieldConnects platform 
interacts with the 3DS in the background to authenticate the card holder. The card holder is verified and the data is tokenized so it never reaches a system in clear text. Tokenization and authentication is not visible to the customer. So you will not have a disruption to your checkout process. And this could include shopping cart abandonment, which we see a lot with Amazon. So 3DS is fully integrated to Bluefin. So you get a three for one. You get your data security, your payment security, and authentication. And where is this uh, available today? So our 3DS solution is available to all of our e-commerce clients processing through Bluefin's iframe and hosted payment forms. They can be with Elevon or Chase Payment Tech. As mentioned earlier with Apple Pay and Google Pay, we are working on this available for our FISERV client. So this will be soon available across all of our processors. Integration is simple through your existing PayConnects account. Our pricing is based per successful authentication and our integration documentation can be found on our developer portal. As a quick use case, we've had a few clients be live with the solution within less than 30 minutes through our hosted payment forms. The implementation and adoption is very simple, and we have sales experts and solution engineers that can help you with any questions you have after reviewing that documentation. Excellent. Thank you, Morgan. And one thing I just wanted to kind of point out here um, for the URLs that you'll be seeing, there's going to be two for most of the products that we're talking about. Um, the first is uh, the web facing, the bluefin.com backslash products. All of our products have their own web page, and that also has a contact us form, so you can contact us directly through there. And then developers portal is going to have the more technical information uh, that you can look up uh, regarding the product and implementation as well. So just wanted to mention that quick. Excellent. So I'm going to transition now from Morgan over to Jennifer Junk here, and she's gonna walk us through our anti-fraud scoring product and our chargeback management platform. Thank you, Danielle. Um, as Danielle stated earlier, e-commerce fraud has continued to rise year over year. And with the pandemic, we've seen that even greater shift with purchasing and the growth has been exponential. This means that the impact from fraud can be significant to any business from a loss in customer confidence, higher chargeback rate, and a significant loss in revenue. To help our merchants reduce the impact of fraud um, and losses to their business, Bluefin has taken a three-pronged approach um, as discussed, as Morgan just discussed with 3DS, an integrated fraud solution and a chargeback management solution. We have partnered with the Certify, which is one of the most well-known fraud and chargeback solutions in the world to fully integrate a fraud solution into PayConnects. This solution will allow us to assess transactions in real time, identify data patterns by using advanced tools such as device fingerprinting, one of the largest fraud community database, which will help us identify transaction elements that have been previously uh, seen and provide insight into whether they have a positive history or a negative history and a well-defined rule set. Since our scoring process is done pre-op, it will lessen the impact of fraudulent cards and transactions that are being authorized by the processor and help your workflows. So how does it work? It works. We can have this product integrated in all of our um, different PayConnects integrations through the hosted payment form, our iframe, or our API calls. Today I'm going to walk through what it looks like from our hosted payment form perspective. Um, when you sign up for our hosted payment form, it's a very quick integration. All of the device fingerprinting um, is already uh, embedded into the hosted payment form page. Um, but we'll look to have you add some additional fields into your hosted payment form to supplement the data that is being sent to the fraud solution for fraud scoring. So with that being said, the data from your hosted payment form will be sent pre-off into PayConnects as it is normally done now. From PayConnects, the integration to a certify is direct. PayConnects will directly send the transaction information and the, the device, pay, uh, device identification information to the Acertify platform for real-time decisioning. In that platform, as I mentioned, we'll be doing device fingerprinting, using community data, 
and a full well-rounded rule set to identify those transactions as an accept or a reject. Once that scoring is, is done, we will then send back the, a certified will send back that pre-authorization pre recommendation code. From there, we'll make a decision on if it was an accept recommendation, it would then go to your processor as normal for processing. Again, reducing that risk because we know it's a, a, a less risk of a transaction. Or if it was a rejected transaction, it would not be sent to your processor. It would be sent back as a decline to, uh, to the end user um, and letting them know that the transaction was not processed um, for, uh, for a, a particular reason. Um, so that's a quick overview on how our solution is, is presented. Again, slightly different from an API or an iframe solution, but uh, overall very, very uh, significantly standard. So I was just going to say, Jennifer, really quickly, um, if anybody, because we do have flows for all three different types, um, if anybody is interested to see how it would work with API, for example, we're, we'd be happy to send over that flow so you can take a look at that. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. And for the, the product itself, it's actually available now to all PayConnect customers, regardless of your processor. It is processor agnostic. Um, it is priced on a per trend basis, and the integration um, is relatively quick through your PayConnect account. Um, we will do some testing with you up front to ensure that everything and your flow, your normal workflows are working as as desired. Um, and to learn more, please continue to please reach out to your business development representative or to us via these links that are provided. And as we've talked about, we have walked through e-commerce fraud from a 3DS perspective and from a fraud scoring perspective. But the third piece of this fully layered approach is also a chargeback management solution. While 3DS and anti-fraud scoring are there to help reduce your exposure to chargebacks, we all know that chargebacks will still occur even because of reasons outside of fraud. And as we know, there are many different challenges for our merchants to be able to, uh, Daniel, can you move forward one? There are many different challenges that a merchant will face with chargebacks. There are the manual processes of how to actually process the chargeback. Many times a merchant will have multiple platforms that you have to log into to actually be able to get information from your different processors and to get the information for uh, disputing the chargebacks. Every six months, the card brand networks will go and change some of their regulations, change their dispute codes. Uh, so which means that you have a very hard time scaling your teams, keeping them well trained and being able to report and provide tracking and monitoring for your chargebacks. So what the solution does, it helps you with your workflow process. It'll help you provide an intelligent workflow, be able to bring all of your processors into one single process, and with the ever-changing regulations from the car brand networks, it'll help you maintain the requirements because it will be able to update you every time that the processor or, or the car brand changes their requirements and changes their, their recent codes. You won't need to go out and actually be able and, and need to learn that. That information is built right into the system. So it makes it a very seamless process. So how it works is, as we know, the, the chargeback process, the cardholder will raise that dispute. It will be sent to their, they'll send that to their issuer. It will go to the car brand network who will process that information, send it to your acquirer. From what our system will do, we will then reach out to the acquirer, if, once you've signed up, reach out to the acquirer, bring that information into the uh, Bluefin solution that's been powered by a certify, tabulate all that information together, and depending on the type of service that you decide to move forward with, either send you an email that will provide you the details on the dispute 
or you'll actually log into a platform to actually be able to respond to that chargeback and, and uh, respond that way. If you choose the email route, you'll just reply back through the email process. It'll give you all the information regarding the dispute and the requirements that are needed to actually respond to that dispute based on that specific reason code. It'll all be there right in front for you. From there, once you respond back, the entire process will take all that data, create a uh, representment packet, and send that back to the acquirer for them to uh, validate and help you win that chargeback, and then provide that information back to the cardholder through the rest of the process. Okay. So currently, this product is live and available for clients using uh, First Data. Uh, we will be continuing to add processors throughout the year so that all of our processors do have coverage. Uh, the item, the pricing on it is based on per item or per dispute. And again, if you would like to uh, get more information regarding this product, um, you'll notice here, um, you can speak with your, your business development representative or, or sales manager. Uh, but one thing you'll notice here is there actually isn't any information for the developer portal because one of the significant pieces of the solution is if you do not need to do any integration through the Bluefin products to be able to use this uh, to use this product. So whether you're on PayConnex or Decryptix or even ShieldConnex, you have the ability to sign up and use this product. Okay. Great. So that's a completely out of the box solution, Jen. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Wonderful. All right, so we're going to transition now into a couple of additional things that we wanted to discuss and just as updates today. Um, and Morgan, I'm going to hand it over to you to discuss the QuickBooks integration quickly. And many of you, I believe, um, received the emails in December and probably signed up for our webinar to learn more. But just in case you missed it, um, we do have an integration now that provides QuickBooks accounting through PayConnect. So Morgan, can you kind of walk us through that real quick? Absolutely. Thank you, Danielle. I am very excited about this product, just given the amount of client and partner demand that we had um, regarding this the last few months. <clears throat> so Bluefin was pleased to introduce QuickBooks integration with Sender. Given QuickBooks is a primary accounting and financial management software used by 2.3 million small and medium-sized businesses, both in the U.S. and internationally processing over 1 billion in transactions annually. So this is a significant driver for a lot of our clients. Clients and partners using our PayConnects gateway can now quickly connect their payment processing account with QuickBooks to allow for automated bookkeeping and one-click reconciliation. Our integration also allows to historical data imports, customized workflows. This can include applying taxes to payments or auto categorization of income on the invoices. Just as a quick ROI example, we did have a dental office that has already experienced an immediate ROI of over $1,200 per month, yielding a 464% increase in time and dollars compared to their daily manual input of payment data. So that, that's an example of a good um, small size business that's already seen value in our product. How does it work? Adoption is very simple. It includes entering only a few data elements already established with our existing Bluefin PayConnects account. So you're not going to have any paperwork, any integration work necessary. It's very out of the box, um, similar to the certified product. Where is it available? It's available across all processors, all integration types. So it allows for a very quick and easy adoption. Excellent. Thank you so much. And we're actually going a lot faster than I thought we were. And that's good because we have quite a few questions already. Um, but we're going to close it out with something that is super important and is coming up rather quickly. Um, this is an interesting kind of scenario. And we're not going to talk too, too much about this today, only because we are planning on doing a much more in-depth webinar next month, probably around March 15th or so. So we'll be inviting everybody to that. But this is regarding the new, what we call NACHA first time web debit verification. So NACHA back in 2020, 2021 introduced a new rule that requires payment originators perform account validation for web debit ACH transactions the first time a customer uses an account number, okay? 
it was introduced in, in quote unquote enforced, if you will, um, back in March 2021. However, they gave a grace period of one year to 2022, March 19. Um, for companies really to kind of get the technology in order, in order to be able to provide this to their merchants and also for merchants to get ready for this rule to be enforced. Previous to this rule, there was no validation requirement from the ACH network that a bank account um, is actually opened or closed or that there are funds available within the account. Now, anybody who accepts ACH today knows that is no fun. Uh, we do not want to be hitting accounts that are closed, no longer active, et cetera, et cetera. This new NACHA rule requires that payment originators validate ACH accounts the first time they are used, which would be Bluefin doing the validation since we are the payment, quote unquote, originator. All of this would happen prior to processing an ACH transaction. So what we did starting last year is that to have this baked directly into PayConnex um, for all of our folks that are doing ACH today, we partnered with a company called Microbuild that will be validating first time ACH accounts. So this will enable all of our merchant base that are doing ACH transactions today to meet this new NACHA rule and any additional ACH account validation that they may want to conduct. So not only is this product set up for the first time web debit verification, there's also additional ACH validation that you can do through it, which is why we're going to have a separate webinar on this topic specifically. Um, this is a much bigger than what we would call a bread box. Uh, and this is going to warrant its own presentation. So just stay tuned for more information on when we'll be conducting that. Um, I will be sending a follow on email to everybody next Monday that will include more details on that webinar. And it's also going to include our Q1 product newsletter, which will contain much of the information that you have seen here today but also additional information that um, pertains over to updates to Shield Connects, updates to P2P eManager, um, updates to our integration um, for Ingenico devices on the PayConnect gateway. The product newsletter will have all of that for you folks. So I want to kind of just close it out today by talking about two quick resources. The first is the developer portal, which we've mentioned quite a few times. Go check it out. Um, if you're a PayConnects, a Decryptix user, if you're interested in Shield Connects, instead of having just APIs and SDKs that you can download via the website, which constantly need to be updated, this portal acts as a repository for all of the information that you need for the integration of Bluefin's products. And it is updated in real time. So when something changes, you can expect it to be updated on the developer portal. So anything that your technical staff might need, your implementation specialists, if there's interest in these products, go check it out on the developer portal. The second thing I wanted to mention is uh, if you spend any time on the Bluefin website, you might have seen that we have a new Bluefin bot on there. And a bot is great. Um, you know, you can ask it questions, it'll direct you to websites, you know, web pages for products, et cetera. This bot though, now has real-time interaction with our customer service staff. So instead of going through the contact us page or the support page, if you have a service inquiry, you can now leverage this bot to get in touch with one of our service representatives during business hours um, and ask your question directly. This is going to speed up the response time. It's going to speed up if you're having any problems with your bank account or, you know, is your device not working? We're completely fully integrated and set up to answer all of those questions that come through the bot. And with that being said, I'm going to just pause here and we're going to start with questions. We have quite a few, but we have plenty of time to answer everything. So please, if you have a question, make sure you just type it into the right hand question pane and we're going to go in the order that they came in. So give me one minute and we're gonna get started. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna scroll up to uh, the top and this is a this is a good question Morgan I'm going to field this one over to you because we do have merchants on the phone today that are with some of our partners 
um, so this one is specifically to patron manager, and I know we've got members of patron manager on the phone today, but they're wondering specifically, you know, as we discuss these products, is there any, you know, we talked about QuickBooks being standalone. We talked about chargeback management being standalone. Um, how are we dealing with integration with the fraud scoring or 3DS, or how is that working with the partners? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, happy to answer that and thrilled that our patron friends are on here, very near and dear to our heart. Um, so you know, what we've been doing for our integration is we have product experts, we have integration experts, and you know, we're, we're really trying to lean on our developer portal to ensure that we've captured all the integration documentation that our clients and partners will need. With that said, we certainly understand, you know, there's going to be a lot of follow-up questions as you go through the testing efforts. So we have product resources that are dedicated uh, to work through this with us, as well as solution engineers. So product and our solution engineer team have worked very closely together to both be fully educated and trained on the product. So that way we have multiple experts that work with us throughout the integration. So we see it as, you know, starting with product and probably ending with integrations, but we will assign those resources for every product that has an integration component to make sure that all of your questions and concerns are addressed. Excellent, thank you. Um, our next question actually pertains to Salesforce, which is great. Um, and Patty says, we are in the process of looking at new AMS systems and two of them work with Salesforce. Since we already use PayConnect, will we be able to merge our PayConnect account with the new AMS? And that is a great question, Patty. I think it really just depends on who these companies are and if they have a current integration with Bluefin. So uh, we work with a lot of different Salesforce companies. We work with a lot of different partners where we pass information back and forth. The best tact will be just to figure out who it is that you're looking at. Um, and if we aren't partnered with them for some reason, there is a potential that we can start a partnership with them. So I'm going to connect with you offline on that and we'll just chat a little bit about the, who you're looking at and see if uh, any of those companies are partnered with us. And next question, actually, it's gonna go back to you, Morgan. Um, we use Serbo. Uh, obviously, we know that's an EHR for payments. Do they need to enable Google Pay and Apple Pay? So in other words, if we're looking at from the HPF standpoint, maybe not so much API for an individual merchant, um, are our merchants able to just put uh, Google Pay and Apple Pay on the website? So uh, great question. Uh, we will need to work with the individual partners to adopt the Google and Apple Pay platform for it to be rolled out to all the individual clients. So okay. from a proactive in point, we have worked with all of our ISVs already to ensure that they have the appropriate documentation regarding Apple Pay and Google Pay. I know specifically that almost all of them are either finished scoping that work or have already completed that work to ensure that that payment method is adopted. So it is a top priority for most of our ISVs uh, for Servo. Um, you know, specifically offline, I will get with you individually on where they are at in that process. Mm -hmm. They all understand, you know, how important this payment method is. And I think also for the other clients that we have on the phone, you know, making that um, known, you know, to your specific software entity will, will be helpful in, in probably the progress and the prioritization of getting that payment method adopted into their platform. Yes, that's an excellent point too, because all of our partners are wonderful and they have been with us for many, many years. But as we roll out the new products, because we're integrated with so many different software platforms, a lot of the products that we're rolling out is dependent on what is their time frame, what is their schedule. They have a lot of their own work that they're doing. But that being said, if people are really interested in Google Pay or Apple Pay or 3DS, go to the partner or come to us and we'll talk to the partner and that will help us kind of just get a gauge for the interest so that we can do the work together. We just don't want to integrate everything and then have nobody be interested in it because Google Pay, Apple Pay may not always be, you know, applicable to every single industry that we're dealing with. And Julie, I saw that you have a follow-on question and that is specifically about the Chrome issues. Um, I will get with you offline because we do have the workaround for that, but you can also go to the merchant support page now 
And we have all of the instructions and the workaround for that on the merchant support page. But I will make sure you have that after this call. Uh, let's see. So I have a question from Dalton, and this is um, a good one, I think, probably for the chargeback portion. Uh, he operates a fitness center, and all the memberships are online. Um, the client enters their own credit card info and signs a contract. Where they get stuck is that when the client challenges the charge, um, he says that they do well in the first round where they send in the contract showing proof that we were allowed to charge for the contract. But then the client disputes it again and it goes up for arbitration, which is obviously very costly. Um, how can we protect ourselves and it be worth the cost of arbitration? If we had proof of permission to charge, but they can dispute it in the end. That's a really good question. And I'm not sure if we can get to that level of detail in terms of the chargeback process, but Jennifer, I know you've been around the certified product for a while. I mean, if you yeah, have a signed contract and then they are, they're disputing it. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a, a difficult situation to, 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 to deal with and to work through. And again, unfortunately, with the arbitrations, um, it is a case-by-case -case basis, and it really does depend on um, you know, your, your processor and how they are reviewing the data and, and what is coming back from the merchant in that dispute. So unfortunately, you know, it is definitely a case-by-case -case -case basis. Um, and it's something, you know, as you're working through um, making sure that you, one, uh, initially are sending back all the correct information that is needed for that chargeback uh, reason code. Um, and that's where some of the, the benefits of the platform kind of comes into play is it, you know, really goes into really what do you need for that particular chargeback. But in the end, it does wind up being, you know, the, the, the processor's decision on how, uh, you know, sometimes they do lean towards the benefit of the cardholder versus mm -hmm. the benefit of the merchant. But again, you know, without getting into the details of each and every uh, of that specific situation, it'd be really hard to say uh, why, you know, you know how the, the, the processor will handle that arbitration dispute. Interesting, okay. Yeah, chargebacks could be a tricky thing, so. Yeah, they definitely are. Uh, oh yeah, and nobody really wants to go into arbitration. Um, no. So this is a great question, um, and Dave, this was one of the questions I think I had wanted to bring up too, but, and this is I, probably, I guess, Jenna Morgan, I can kind of pitch it over to you. And it is, we, we talked about two different kind of like fraud tools today, right? We talked about 3DS, mm -hmm. customer authentication mm -hmm. at the checkout behind the scenes. And then we talked about the a certified anti-fraud scoring. So if I'm a merchant and I'm thinking, okay, I definitely want to authenticate my customers, but I also want to quote unquote proactively address threats. Do mm -hmm. I choose one? Do I do both? Are they, are they, you know, do they play together? I mean, what, what do you guys think? Sure. Uh, I'll take a stab at it um, initially. And then Margaret, if you want to add in more into it, uh, the, the, you know, it can be very confusing, right? So 3DS is a, a method of authenticating upfront that this person is who they say they are. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times not all issuers uh, are participating, so you may not be able to authenticate that particular transaction, um, which then can lead you to you know, still being uh, liable or even you know, they're unable to uh, authenticate that transaction, so you still have some liability on that individual transaction. The nice thing about our solution is it was built in mind with having both products available and being able to use the information um, from both products together. So as uh, Morgan mentioned before, the 3D um, S authentication is done um, while the person is actually filling out the information on the payment page. Mm -hmm. And then that information is sent into PayConnects. Um, when that transaction actually comes in to um, the PayConnect system, once I've hit submit, we have that information within the system and then can actually add that into, if the customer has both platforms, add the 3DS information into the fraud scoring. And if it has been an authenticated transaction, use that to lessen the, the overall risk of the transaction. Or mm -hmm. if that authentication actually fails, we can use the certified information to help validate whether or not that that is actually a a uh, a good transaction, even though the 3DS may be failed, um, or the 3DS didn't authenticate. So it, they these both 
solutions will actually play well together. Mm -hmm. um, and they were built with both solutions in mind um, internally. Uh -huh. So okay. hopefully that, that, that helps with that question there. Uh, yes. Morgan, if you have anything you want to add. Yeah, just really quick. The only thing I would add is with 3D Secure, you know, it prevents um, friendly fraud. So there's still other types of fraud out there, yeah. right? If you have both, points, you're preventing the friendly fraud for the very specific chargeback codes that it protects, as well as embedding that into the Certify Fraud Tool to prevent all of the other types of fraud. So when you have both solutions in place, you know, you are at an optimal level of fraud protection. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So you're covering all of the bases by combining the two. Absolutely. Can we talk really quickly, and this is a little bit off subject, when we talk about friendly fraud, can you give some examples? Is it just basically people saying, I didn't purchase this, or, and why would they well, do such things? It, it is. That, I mean, that's, you know, that's one of the main ones for the chargeback codes that it protects. Mm -hmm. And the biggest example I like to think of in this, you know, this new normal is the, is the subscription. So, you know, that could be uh, the Amazon. Prime subscription, the Netflix subscription, you know, they're disputing that charge that they have uh, for forgetting to cancel, right? So you oh. say, oh, Amazon Prime, you raise my rates again from now it's 99, then it's 119, then it's 149. And I'm not even sure what it is right now because I don't cancel mine. Uh, but, you know, they continue to um, cancel those monthly subscriptions. And with e-commerce, that's something else we're seeing. You know, another trend is the subscription payments. And so when they dispute those, that is one of the main things that we're seeing in retail of being, um, you know, something that 3D Secure would help with friendly fraud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and another version of friendly fraud, too, would be, you know, um, a, a uh, a college student having their parents' credit card and, you know, going and making a bunch of purchases on that credit card and the parent winds up getting the card, the statement later going, wait a minute, what are all these charges? I didn't make these charges thinking that they're actually fraud, but a family member, so I being friendly, um, mm -hmm. would actually went and made these trip, made these, uh, these transactions, right? So that's in one and another version of friendly fraud where it's somebody in the household who made the transaction, but necessarily wasn't authorized to make that transaction. Um, and it's being disputed back. Um, mm -hmm. so there's, there's many different types of friendly fraud. Um, and, and again, you know, uh, even from, you know, something on their statement where different business names that are, you know, you know it is Joe's T-shirt shop, but it's, you know, actually Joe's Inc. or something, or, or you know, a different name on the on the credit card statement. That can lead to a consumer going, oh, I'm going to charge this back. I don't know who right. this merchant is, um, and, and, you know, disputing it that way as well. Yes, which yeah, I think and, we've, and all, I think we've all been there. To add on to that, what's so interesting is if, so it's charge back code 4863. Cardholder does not recognize. So you can say that about so many different things, you know, and I think that's where, you know, it's so easy to get into a chargeback situation or specifically with the friendly fraud is there's a lot of different scenarios encapsulated in 4863 cardholder does not recognize. You can say that about a lot of different things. Um, so, you know, I think when, you, when you're going through your statements and certainly Bluefin will, will help you with this, but trying to go through your chargeback data and understand how many instances you have of the chargeback codes will also help you make decisions about understanding the value of this product. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So do a little bit of research and then come back to us because more than likely one or several of these products will probably be applicable to uh, everybody's business situations, especially when we're doing, like we said at the beginning, more e-commerce. So that actually yeah, ends our questions. Oh, hi. Did yeah. you want to? I have one last comment yeah. around yeah. that. So when you're going through this data, Bluefin's built ROI calculators. So we have oh, ROI true. calculators mm -hmm. for our products. Let us know. You bring us the data. We'll put it into a calculator. I personally love Excel. Um, and so, you know, we can we can pull some pretty compelling financial data and models to help you make these decisions, too. So mm -hmm. you don't have to work. We just need your information and then we will help you um, determine what that can mean to you um, financially. Great. That's a wonderful resource to have. Um, so we're happy to do that. We're happy to answer any questions from today's webinar. I'll be emailing everybody after this with a copy of the presentation in case you didn't 
get a chance to download it from the handout too. You have my email. I'll be including Jennifer and Morgan as well. Um, and we just, we really hope you found this to be educational and useful today. We are just very excited about these new products. We are completely, you know, devoted at Bluefin to serving our customers, um, you know, keeping up with these market trends, making sure that your data is secure and protected, also providing more innovative products for you um, to meet your customers' demands as well. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. And a big thank you also to Morgan and Jennifer for presenting with me. Um, and we will see you hopefully in a month to a month and a half for the microbuilt presentation. Thank you, ladies. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.